Good morning, everyone. It's Tiffany here. Thank you so much and welcome to Classroom Champions, where we bring our Classroom Champion mentors right into your home. If you're new to Classroom Champions, remember that you can put your comments in the Facebook Live and the YouTube Live, and we will do our best to get back to all of them. If you also need today's activity, we're gonna put it right here in the link at the bottom of the screen where you can participate with us today. It's all about healthy living and goals. If you guys are able to print it out, write it down, we would love to see what your healthy living goals are going to be. We have a great good morning from Lori today. Hello, Lori, how are you? Um, we're really excited to have all of you guys today joining Classroom Champions. So like I said before, we talked about healthy living. Did you guys set your healthy living goals for last month? If you haven't, now's a great chance to get some new ones going. You'll be able to use the Healthy Living Tracker to stay on top of your goals at home. And as always, you can hashtag Classroom Champions to show us your goals right at home. Today, we have an awesome, awesome, awesome guest athlete with us today. We're gonna welcome Manny o. Mitchell to Classroom Champions. <laughs> Manny o. good morning, how are you? Good morning. I'm doing great. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing really well. Well, one awesome. Oh, let's see. Who do we have? Charlotte, before we get started, saying, hey, Manio, how you doing? <laughs> What's up, Charlotte? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are so fortunate to have you on Classroom Champions Live today. Manio here is an American athlete, a U.S. champion who specializes in the 200 meter and the 400 meter for track and field. He also is a U.S. World Indoor Champion in 2012, winning the gold medal in the 4x400-meter relay. Manio also, I know, do a little dance for that. <laughs> Manio also in 2012, because indoor wasn't good enough, also is a silver medal, <laughs> silver, silver, silver medal winner at the London Games in the four by four hundred meter re relay. Um, Manio has so many different things that he says he is blessed to be a part of on and off of the track. Loves sharing and inspiring the world and the people within it, and traveling. And Manio, thank you so much for being on the show today. For sure, <laughs> I can't wait. I'm excited. I'm excited. <laughs> I know we are excited to see what you're cooking up in your kitchen today. So Manio, let's go to, you know, looking at what you do for a little bit. So tell us a little bit about the video that we have playing here. So of course, everyone knows that we're going through this pandemic right now and uh, it's very hard to get access to uh, facilities and things like that. But as you can see here, I'm running. And this was one of the first times I actually got to touch the actual track. Um, and you can see I'm kind of out there by myself. Um, and luckily I was able to get a time trial in at this given moment. And a time trial, for those who don't know, is basically all the hard work and training that you've been doing, being that we're unable to race, I simulated some kind of a race uh, in my training. So what you see here is me doing 125 meters as fast as I could. Um, and it, it turned out pretty well. Nice, nice. Oh, I love it. Oh, the time trial days. Uh, but isn't <laughs> it awesome to just kind of be able to see the results of your training that you're doing? For sure. Um, of course, you know, all the hard work and the, and the training, sometimes going to a race is almost like a break um, and being able to to see all that stuff that you've been doing and, and see what the benefits are from putting in those long hours and, you know, writing out your goals and getting to achieve those goals. So being able to do it within a training session is just great to give the body a reset, kind of see where you're at. And then uh, if you're behind, you build up on that. And if you're on track, then you're on track. Awesome. It's like your better can always be better. <laughs> exactly. Well, let's say hi to some kids at home. So we have Dylan here, who's a regular. Hey, Dylan. <laughs> Dylan. And then Ashley said hello and good morning. Uh, we love having our classroom champions kids. And we have some good things in store for them all at home today. So you guys all know we talk about what healthy living is at home. You hear me talk about it all the time. It's the light system. So those green light foods that are going to be your fruits and your vegetables, um, your mangoes, your apples, your celery, your carrots, those are going to be the foods that you can eat as many as you want to eat. 
your yellow white foods are going to be the things that you kind of have to slow down on. So your breads, your pastas, and your rices, still very important for your mind and your body. And then we have those red light foods. And we're probably going to ask Manio what his favorite red light food is. Uh, the things that you can eat mm. sometimes, they're really good, but you can't eat them all the time. So all of those things inside of the red light system allow you to build not only your body, but your mind. And Manio, running the two and the 400, your mind and your body have to be connected. Don't you agree? Uh, most definitely. Most yeah. definitely. Um, for sure. <laughs> can you imagine if you, you ran fast and turned right instead of running fast and turning left? <laughs> yeah, I can I can see a couple red flags coming up. Uh, I can see a couple coaches and friends very disappointed. <laughs> so yeah, most so, definitely. Oh, I love it. I love it. So let's take a pan to your kitchen. Let's see what you're making for the kids at home today. Cool. So today, ladies and gentlemen, we will be making no bake protein balls. Ooh. And they are pretty awesome. I'm set this up here so you guys can see. Awesome. And I'll Looks go good. Over here. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's very easy. It's only three ingredients, four ingredients at most, mm -hmm. and uh, it'll be great. You guys are gonna love it. Awesome. Well, before you get started, there we got a question from Dylan, and he says, "Manio, do you know your top speed? Mine is 19 miles per hour, and I love to run. So, any tips on Whoa. training exercise?" <laughs> I know. That's pretty impressive there, Dylan. <laughs> well, I'm going to go ahead and say, my friend Dylan, you don't really need any tips. <laughs> You're out here breaking speed limits on, on road. So, but no, um, it's it's 20 something. I'm not really sure. We don't really uh, focus on the miles per hour, so to speak. But I know that's a, a topic that comes up a lot. Um, I know for us, it's all about like place and, and actual time in seconds. So uh, a good 400 meter time for example elite level would be anywhere around sub 45 seconds now even beginning to get into the times of 44 5 or faster so um that's always good and then in the 200 it's also sub 20 seconds is what everyone is trying to achieve so um hopefully that helps answer your question but of course the more you train the the healthier you are the better you eat uh the the more stable your mind is the faster you're going to run awesome no matter the distance <laughs> he says thanks. He's proud of his speed and he's only 13 years old. So AKA, oh, wow. I take that as he's coming for you. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, I'll be waiting for you, Dylan. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So let's pan back to making your snack at home. I'm really excited for these protein bites. So you can walk us through what you're getting ready to do in your kitchen. Yeah. So first and foremost, we're going to take our kind of like our protein mix. Um, and this is kind of like a cake mix. And as you can see, again, I'll show it to you. We're making protein balls. Very, very simple to make. If you don't have, I have Kodiak cakes here. If you don't have Kodiak cakes, it's very simple to take these ingredients uh, from the box and make them yourself. And I'll, and I'll read a couple of them off for you guys. So basically, this is a 100% whole grain, um, non-GMO ingredients. Um, and for each ball that we're going to make, it's going to be 10 grams of protein. So these are super packed with what you need to get your body to get to the next level. So um, and some of the things are, like I said, whole grain. So there's oats. You can use oatmeal. Um, you can use semi-sweet chocolates. Um, and then, of course, the protein itself. Um, but, yeah, all, all things that are pretty much healthy for you guys. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to pour the mix into a large bowl and I have a clear bowl, a glass bowl for you guys. Um, if you use glass, make sure you have a parent or a guardian to help you out just in case we don't wanna crack that and all those bad things that may come with that. But I use clear <laughs> so you guys can see um, exactly how I'm gonna be mixing this. So we're gonna pour this mix in and we'll just do the entire bag. Kind of shake that around, get it level. And then we're gonna put that to the side then we have, um, it calls for peanut butter. Uh, if you don't have peanut butter, or if you have an allergy or something like that, any other butter would, uh, nut butter would work. Um, and I'm sure parents and guardians can help you with that as well. Um, but for today, I'm gonna be using a creamy almond butter. 
Um, and for me, that's a healthier choice than the peanut butter uh, because I'm trying to stay fit because I don't want to be a little overweight going around that track because the, <laughs> the, the heavier I am, the harder it hurts. OK, the more it hurts. So we'll go in and we're going to put uh, I think it called for a half a cup of peanut butter, but we're not making the, the entire batch. So we're going to do about that much of it. So one spoon. This is a tablespoon, by the way. So we'll do a tablespoon. And it's really sticky, so we got to kind of do a little bit of work. This is where the weights come in. You have to lift weights so you can do this. <laughs> and we'll do one more spoon. And once we have it off, boom, boom, come on. OK, great. We set the peanut butter or whatever your nut butter of choice is to the side. And then can you guys guess what this is? Ooh, it's honey, it's honey. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go in, this is pure honey. And this bottle is actually about eight ounces. So we're gonna go a little, maybe two thirds, so one third. So this is a third, this is a third, that's a third. We'll go one third of that and we're gonna put all of that in here. And of course, honey is like the distance runner. They're gonna run a little bit slower. It's gonna take a little bit more time but they're still going to get the job done. They're going to get those medals. <laughs> I love that analogy. <laughs> so right. as you're pouring your honey in, what's next? <laughs> I've never All heard right, honey so, as a distance analogy. That was great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to finish the race. It's going to take a little <laughs> bit longer. It's a distance race. You have to have patience. All right, so we have our honey. And all that's doing is just adding a natural sweetness to the protein ball. So. Um, and then the very last ingredient and one of the most popular ingredients for not only most items that you make, but for your body as well, the H2O, water. So we're going to add water to this mix. And I have about a fourth of a cup of water right here. And all that's going to do is just help us be able to mix this um, a little bit easier. All right. So that water is going to help us break down the peanut butter or whatever butter that we use. So, you know what, let's let's just throw the spoon away and we're going to use our hands. We're going to get into this and we're going to use our hands and we're going to get a little dirty. But we're going to get the job done. So as you can see, I'll bring us a little bit closer. We're going in here with our hands. This is the fun part. So get hands on. It makes you feel like you're a part of the process. So we're just going to go in here. It'll be a little icky at first. You're going to be like, yuck, ew, whatever. But we're going to get in here and we're just going to mix this up really nice until we have a smooth consistency. And then we're going to start to shape our protein balls. Oh, this one's mixing really, really well. Yeah, yeah. Again, remember, each one of these balls that we're going to make is going to be an amount of 10 grams of protein. 10 grams of protein, like that's insane, that's a lot. Oh man, well, while you're mixing, we have a question from Lisa who asked you, where do you find this mix? In the baking aisle, in the grocery store? Like, where did you find it? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so you can go to pretty much any grocery store and you'll find it uh, typically where the snacks aisle is. So like protein bars, um, and even sometimes they can be found where pancake mixes and things like that are. So. Uh, that would be probably your best bet to find this particular brand. But also, like I said, you can also break down the ingredients like I mentioned earlier. So if you guys go back into the video and you'll hear me talk about oatmeal and the semi-sweet chocolates that go in um, and other things. And you can even add like raisins or all kinds of different things. There's no there's no wrong way to make this particular dish um, and snack. So you can kind of throw in some things that you like and uh make it your own you can make it your own recipe mm. okay well, yeah go ahead what's next no go for it and then i'll, I'll bring Got out it. um catherine's question okay so as you can see i'll bring this to the we got like a huge blob i call it the flubber if you guys have ever seen the movie <laughs> flubber. so we have this huge glob my hands are dirty but i love it because I'm a part of the process and it makes you appreciate your food more when you're a part of the process. So we're going to take just a little pinch, right? About that much. And we're going to take it 
And again, it's gonna be a little sticky just from the honey, but that's because we need it to mold the ball. And we're gonna make balls about this size. Everybody see that? Yep. And then we're gonna have another clear dish here and we're gonna just stick them on just like that. So again, taking a pinch, rolling it around. When I was a kid, I used to love getting hands in, hands on, getting in the kitchen with my grandma and my mother. Um, and it's always paid off now because I'm still loving being in the kitchen. Um, and what better way to stay fit and stay healthy than having cool snacks that not only are good for you, but they taste really, really good. So again, we're just forming these balls. Yep. And they get stickier and stickier, but that's part of the process. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you're sitting there rolling away, and I know kids are going to be really happy to partake in this at home because what kid does not like dirty hands from Kodiak mix? <laughs> Griffin right. says that he likes to add goji berries to his things. I've never, I don't Ooh. even think I've ever eaten a goji berry. Have you ever eaten a goji berry? Yeah, I have. And they're actually oh. really, really good. And I think I'm going to add that next time. So thank you for that helpful hint. Oh, for sure. <laughs> and, and Catherine wants to know how many grams of protein do you eat in a day? Oh, wow. Um, see, I used to really, really carefully calculate those things, but now it's come to a point, and I'll just be really honest, honest. with you, it's come to a point that um, you kind of know the things that you need to eat and you know the things that you don't need to eat. Uh, so kind of like the burger versus the grilled chicken and the side salad. Yeah, I probably need the grilled chicken and side salad. However, sometimes you don't have as many options and you have to go with what you have. So I try to just make sure that I'm eating as healthy as I can when it's time to eat healthy. But I also have moments where I can get into those red lights, like, like you mentioned earlier. Um, and I may not eat a whole bunch of them, but it's like, okay, you know what? Let me reward myself a little bit. I've been eating pretty healthy. Let me get one of these red lights, pump the brakes just a tad. But then we're going to get back to that green light, yellow light life. That's how we that's how we live over here. <laughs> so I ask everyone on Tasty Tuesday, what is your favorite red light food? Oh, man. For me, it's probably going to be. Wow, there's there's so many to choose from. It's probably going <laughs> to be pizza for me. I I love pizza and I love fresh made cookies. Um, oh, so, so those are probably my weaknesses. But the thing that I've discovered here lately is that there are a lot of healthy pizzas out there. Um, so I don't feel as bad. So I kind of go into the red light, but I'm not, I'm like, I'm yielding a little bit, you know? Bring it's it good. back it's a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So for those who are interested, my favorite pizza right now, uh, there's a place here in Asheville called Pizza Mine, and they make the best pizza that I've ever had. It is a gluten-free, non-GMO, all that stuff. And on the pizza, it's a, a white base and it's a pesto base. Um, and it has roasted cauliflower and beets on the pizza. I love beets. Oh, I and love I add, beets oh, so yeah, much. Me too. I add caramelized <laughs> onions. I'll add caramelized onions to it. And sometimes if I'm feeling really, really hungry, we'll add the spicy hickory nut Italian sausage to it um just to make it a little bit more red light um but yeah it's really good so we've well, made speaking of gluten one, two, three, oh, sorry six of these I oh no go ahead we've made we've made our six balls here so we're good there awesome well speaking of gluten-free and going back to the kodiak cakes Lori said that she found um a gluten-free aspect of kodiak cakes so yeah there's another dietary specialty that people can use to join us in at home so For sure. going back to your, your protein balls, I cut you off. Sorry, that was important, I think. <laughs> yeah, no worries. So we formed, I'm going to walk away for a second. We formed the balls, right? Um, typically, it will call for 12. It will probably make about 12 of them. Um, but I cut the recipe in half, so we have about six. Um, and so after you form the balls, give your give yourself give your hands some love, wash off the, the ingredients. And then what you'll do is you're literally just gonna take these and you're gonna stick them in the fridge. So I'm gonna pop these in the fridge right here. 
and I'll be right back. Awesome. Boom, boom. Now, as you're going to the refrigerator, being on a four by four is such a team dynamic. And so how has that really affected you being at home? Um, how is it training by yourself now? Um, for me personally, it's a little different than, than most athletes. Um, I actually train with just myself and my coach. Um, and it's been like that ever since I turned pro back in 2012. So for me personally, it's not as bad as or as different of a situation as most other athletes may experience in that that may be involved in like a group or um, a training group or something like that, which I'm not I'm not opposed to at all. I actually love training in the groups, especially when we get on the teams, being able to to be around like athletes and and people who you admire and, and aspire to be like or or to, to race against and with. It's a pretty great experience. But for me personally, just being able to go out there and know that, you know, every single day I do this by myself with just my coach. So that way, when I go over to Tier Europe or when I go into a, a track event, I'm, I'm more than prepared for, for everything that may come at me because I'm used to training by myself. So, um, but again, I, I love the, the training group aspect, uh, but sometimes, especially in my sport, we have sometimes eight lanes or nine lanes, but I can't control anything that is around me. I can only control what lane I'm in and what I do in that lane. So um, I think the independent training aspect that I have definitely uh, benefits me in that respect. Oh, that's so awesome to hear. And you're right, like you can't always control, actually you can't control what's going on in the other lanes. You just gotta stay in your lane and stay focused on on what you're trying to achieve and, and getting to the end of your own race and whatever that looks like. Right. So going back to the pizza, KP said that <laughs> her kids are cringing at the fact that there's beets and everything on pizza. Charlotte said she does not like beets. It's okay, Charlotte. We probably like them enough for you so it's it's a okay yeah. in that category um we got another question from dylan saying how has your exercise routine changed during this quarantine oh wow dylan that's a you're on it you're on fire my guy like so that's a, <laughs> that's a really really great question that you asked um for me personally i know uh, uh, so it's not just running uh for us there's there's weights and and all those it's just all different types of things that are involved in being an elite athlete and I'm sure every other athlete can attest to this, but the weight room is what I miss the most. Um, being able to be strong and and knowing where you are physically in your fitness, uh, for me, transforms to the track. Um, and not have, not being able to have that for almost a month was a struggle until I decided, okay, I don't know when the gyms are going to open back up, so let's create a home gym. So we created a home gym. I have full access to, to everything in the gym now. Well, almost everything. Um, so that's been a great aspect of training now. Um, the most, I guess the saddest part about all of it is uh, just missing the track itself, um, not being able to get out there as much as you would like. Um, but again, being that I train solo, my coach is very, very intelligent in making sure that we have grass or access to a hill or anything that we would do on the track. We kind of change it around to, to make it work. Um, and that's that's the good thing about being an athlete or, or just being someone who is, you know, who really cares about the sport and really cares about their fitness. You're going to get it in no matter what. Um, and if you need to make the changes, you make the necessary changes. It may be, you know, a difficult change at first, but eventually uh, you become accustomed to doing things a certain way. Um, and it just works out for us right now. So. Dylan, to answer your question, it was rough at first, uh, especially more mentally than anything, just not knowing what was going to happen with the season and not knowing where you're going to train and or when you're going to race again or if the Olympic Games are going to be held. So uh, just being able to to adjust like that is, is key. So being being open, keeping an open mind and most importantly, just staying positive no matter what, even in the negative situations, just trying to take a positive out of it. Oh, man, that is such a great mindset to have with something that is just like the outside lanes, like you can't control it, but you got to make the best of oh, it man. and stay focused on what your what your task at hand is. Um, last kind of thing that we're going to bring up before we transi transition in today's challenge is you have a little one at home. And so how how is it being home with like a little one and trying to train and, you know, making sure that he's active and you're active? Yeah, so being that my son Kai, who's seven, uh, being that he's been home pretty much 
<laughs> the last what three months or something um since the whole quarantine and and, and COVID-19 hit um it's been a it's been an adjustment for him as well so being able to um kind of just adjust on the fly again uh now I'm 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 literally a part-time teacher <laughs> uh so we've been homeschooling and that's been going great and then he's always he's involved in soccer and basketball so unfortunately, after his first game, the soccer season was called um, off. So we've been trying to, to get out as much as we can outside um, and try to do some activities out there, trying to just stay fit, even in the house when we couldn't go out, uh, just doing all kinds of different activities in the house and just staying as close to fit as possible. And um, as far as my training, um, he enjoys being out there. He goes out there sometimes. Um, of course, we're trying to stay within the rules and the, the guidelines of, you know, all the things that are going on with, within the world. But it's great to get out there and get some sunlight and, and just have some open space. There's lots of hills and parks and recreation here. So we try to take advantage of that as, most as, as much as possible. So um, it's been a transition, but I think so far overall, it's been a great transition. Oh, that's, that's so cool. And it's cool that you're able to kind of bring them out there with you. Um, usually we have the mentors tell the kids what to do at home. But I think this is a great example of kids. Like, what are some things that you're doing inside of your house that Manio and Kai can practice at home? Um, I know it's always cool just to see what different what people are doing differently um, that you may not have thought about. So kids, put it in the comment box. What are some things that you guys are doing um, to stay active? Or even like snack ideas. Like, you know, Manio was the one mixing in his bowl today, but what are some things that you guys are making at home as well? Um, oh, Dylan yeah, has another you know. question for you. <laughs> Dylan wants to know how many races have you won in 2019? Um, so well, I ran, this is, this is sad to go back and think about this. I ran one race in 2019 yeah. and I won, well, it was a prelim and a final and I won both of those races, but that was the, that was it. That was my season. Um, yeah. so that just goes to show, you know, you have to be prepared you know, for the worst and hope for the best um, at all times and try to leave it all out there. Well, no matter what your sport is or what activity you're doing, or even if you're in a classroom, just try try to leave your desk better than you got there um, yeah. and, and try to do your best. So I, luckily I, I ran one of my fastest times ever. So I was glad about that. So I can look back and say, hey, this went well, even though, you know, the season was cut short. So, yeah. Oh, I like it. I like it. Well, let's go to what the challenge is for the day. So we always challenge and Olivia is saying that she loves coloring. I love coloring too, Olivia. Hey, me too. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll go into today's challenge. And we want to know how the healthy living goals are going for you guys at home. Cook something healthy. I know Manio and Kai would love to see what you guys are cooking at home. Take a picture of it. Have your parents or guardians take a picture of it drop it inside of the Facebook or the YouTube link and share with us by hashtagging classroom champions. We would love to see what you guys are cooking up in the kitchen. Manio, thank you so much for coming on today. Um, and just explain sure. what they all love doing at home, what you love doing at home, how you're adapting on this Tasty Tuesday. And we look forward to seeing all of you guys here next week. For sure. <laughs> all right. Bye guys. <laughs> see you guys. Hehehehe. <laughs>